Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Flash Season 6 Episode 10 video, sort of an epilogue for Crisis on Infinite Earths and giving us our first preview for how the multiverse has changed and what Earth Prime is like now that Crisis has happened and they rebooted everything with a brand new timeline. So if you're brand new to my channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing a new Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Easter egg from the episode on the video. Careful for spoilers, if you haven't seen the episode yet, we'll do top 10 WTF and Easter eggs as we go along, starting with number 10. The cold open, it jitters. So they've used Crisis to sort of refresh some of the sets so they look a little bit different. Jitters is just the first one. Grand reopening, they've been closed for the last five months because of a crisis. They even call it out on a banner. I know we're all still freaking out about the Ezra Miller Justice League movie crossover with The Flash. Because the multiverse is back, they're also back too. So technically all the Justice League characters exist on an unnamed Earth. They never really told us which Earth Ezra Miller came from. But remember, all these normal people living in Central City don't know that the universe was rebooted. They don't know about DC Rebirth. These people only know that the Anti-Monitor attacked with all those crazy Shadow Demon minions after they rebooted everything, so that's what everybody's thinking about when they're thinking about Crisis. But obviously, we, the audience, know about Crisis on Infinite Earths, so it's also calling that out in a meta way. The Barista calls out Vibachinos. Remember that pretty much every main character on Team Flash has a coffee-flavored drink named after them. The other big thing here, number 9, WTF, is the brand new intro for the show. I'm assuming this is a permanent intro that's going to play in front of all the episodes now. It got a huge glow up. I'm a big fan of the way they do this. It's designed as if you're taking the Flash's perspective running through the Speed Force, passing by all these moments, quote unquote, in time with the current main characters on the show. Number 8, big WTF, Cisco's new Pokedex of the Flash rogues. So as he says, some of them came back to life after Crisis when they rebooted everything. Some of them got changed in a big way. The new version of Dr. Light is just the first example of that, of one of the changed ones. And the new version of Mirror Master, who obviously I'll talk about because this episode sort of sets them up as the next big villain. Remember, Crisis combined all three different Earths from the main shows. You have Black Lightning's Earth and Supergirl's Earth combined with Earth 1. So for the most part, all of the main characters are on the same Earth now. The vast majority of these villains you'll recognize from previous seasons on The Flash. Like some of them, like The Mist, for instance, are from the very first couple of episodes of The Flash. Some of them were killed off in earlier seasons. Cisco's basically saying that everybody in the binder came back to life. So that doesn't mean that we're going to see all these new characters. It just means that we might see some of them in a new way. But I do like that they're keeping some of the characters the same. Like I do hope that Abracadabra comes back at some point just because he's from so far in the future. You could have a lot of fun with that. There's a couple of things that are off in this binder you may have noticed. So Emily Polizzi, for instance, up in the right-hand corner here, isn't a comic book character. She's actually the script coordinator in real life for the Flash TV show. So some of these random villains in the binder, you don't get to see every single face in the binder, are just members of the crew. But the Dr. Kimio Hoshi is obviously a hat tip for the brand new version of Dr. Light that debuts later in the episode. She is the female Dr. Light in the comics, but way back during Flash season 2, they actually said that the Flash TV show Dr. Light was Linda Park from Earth 2. And if it wasn't clear, yes, there is still a multiverse. I'll talk about that in a second because they played it in a really weird way. There were so many questions in my timeline. Wait a minute, what happened to the multiverse? How come they don't think that there's a multiverse? Cisco calls out Eden Core. They're a group from season 1. They were eco-terrorists that they took down. Rainbow Raider, you'll remember, was the villain of the very first Flash vs. Arrow crossover when he made the Flash go crazy and fight Oliver. Number 7, the brand new map of Earth Prime. Cisco spent a bunch of time drawing up a brand new timeline and a brand new version of Earth Prime's cities where all the heroes live. Now, I don't think it's the entire world, it's just North America and a little bit of Africa because of Gorilla City. But here you can see National City is right next to Star City. Then Gotham is somewhere near Chicago because Gotham in the DC universe is sort of a stand-in for Chicago. I know a lot of people used to think that it was way closer to the eastern seaboard. But the reason why Gotham looks like it's in the Midwest is because, like Christopher Nolan, for instance, filmed his Gotham City of the Dark Knight trilogy in real-world Chicago. And they did that for the Batwoman TV show, too. So that's why it looks like it's in Chicago. Over on the eastern seaboard, zoom and enhance, there are actually some bigger Easter eggs. You notice here that Happy Harbor, Metropolis, and Freeland are all right next to each other. Freeland is where the Black Lightning characters are from. But the biggest Easter egg here is Happy Harbor, so everybody that's a Young Justice fan probably freaked out when they saw this. Wait a minute, they're doing Mount Justice? What's going on here? Are we going to get a live-action Young Justice TV show eventually? 
I don't know what their intention is to do with this. They might just move the quote unquote super friends base to the Mount Justice here, or they might just say that Wally West, when he's not on the TV show, is hanging out with his quote unquote friends at Happy Harbor. Wally West is coming back in episode 14 in a couple weeks. That's also the episode where Reverse Flash is coming back. It's going to be like a really huge Speed Force episode, so I'll talk about that when we get a trailer for it. Santa Prisa is featured during the Question comics, Renee Montoya, so I, people always wonder if they're going to do the Question character at some point. I think there's some IP issues with that, some copyright issues, but that's also where they make Bane's Venom, too. So obviously that's all Batman comic book stuff. Number 6 WTF, addressing the elephant in the room. The characters are acting like they don't know that there's a multiverse again, but they rebooted everything. The multiverse is back. All the Smallville characters are back. All the Earth 2 characters are back. But they spend the entire episode acting like they're all still dead. The way Mark Guggenheim over on Arrow explained this is that it's mostly done for the drama of these secondary characters that don't know. Only the main big characters know about the multiverse coming back, and they just haven't told everyone else yet for some weird reason. There was this huge dramatic arc between Cisco and Nashwell's character, all this grief that they're going through. So I think that it's just for the benefit of that storyline. They're keeping them in the dark ignorant just so that they can do that story, which I don't think is a good reason to do it. Either way, the multiverse is back. So Earth 2, Harrison Wells, Jesse Quick, they're back. Everybody is back. Number five, WTF. Nash Wells is also back for the rest of the season, as they kind of imply. It wasn't really clear what they were going to do with him at the beginning of the episode because everybody still kind of hates him because he was the pariah character, but now he's back to being Nash Wells. He even name checks Atlantis. Nice Aquaman Easter egg. I don't know if there's an Atlantis on Earth Prime now. I would assume that there is, but the map that Cisco drew wasn't of the entire world, so it was kind of hard to see if he had an Atlantis somewhere on there. They reference the Anti-Monitor's lair down in Nashwell's tunnels. They're going to just double check that there aren't any problems there. I think that the showrunner talked about doing some crazy sci-fi and cosmic stuff, though. So we might actually see some new gods Easter eggs happening in future seasons. Number four, WTF. Welcome back, Diggle. So obviously, big crossover with Arrow is sort of an epilogue for Oliver's death. They had a funeral on the final episode of Arrow. I did a whole video for that. They gave Diggle a Green Lantern ring, so I'll put a link for that in the description. But he reminds Barry that he and Lila are moving to Metropolis with his brand new shiny Green Lantern ring ready for Superman crossovers on that TV show. He brings back the mask that Barry gave Oliver at the end of their very first appearance in Arrow Season 2's episodes as part of Oliver's last will and testament. The real reason why Oliver gave Barry the mask back was just as a reminder for the reason that Barry originally gave it to Oliver to protect his family, enjoy what he has. But they set Barry off on this tear because he hasn't completely processed his grief yet. So he gets obsessive over clues. And obviously because he's a CSI, he starts looking for real clues that take them all the way to Lian Yu. Diggle's being a real bro in this episode, so they have a couple jokes about him throwing up like he just wolfs down a whole bottle full of pills before he speeds him off to Lian Yu. But you can tell Diggle is just rolling his eyes into the back of his head when Barry's talking about clues like, dude, it's just a mask. There's nothing special going on here. But it is a cool opportunity for a couple callbacks to previous episodes of the show. He also drops a big Mirror Master Easter egg when he says he was running back on Route 119. The Flash Volume 2 number 119 is a big Mirror Master versus the Flash issue, and there's a giant mirror as we see later in the episode. Number 3 WTF, Bacola Tech, Black Hole, The New Doctor Light, and Joseph Carver. So McCullough Tech has been around on The Flash for the last couple of seasons. McCullough Tech obviously named for Evan McCullough, the second version of Mirror Master. So we knew that they were going to do him at some point. They introduced the mirror gun during season five. So it was just a question of when we were going to see that new version of Mirror Master. But the big twist is, is that this is another one of the Flash rogues that was changed because of the Earth Prime changes. Just like we get a different version of Dr. Light, we get a different version of Mirror Master, Evan McCullough. And it's Ava McCullough, who is the CEO of McCullough Tech. Joseph Carver is also a character from the very first Flash Rebirth comic. He debuts as this scientist who's hit with the Speed Force Storm when it happens at the beginning. He doesn't get powers, but it drives him mad and he seeks to weaponize the Speed Force. Eventually, Barry is able to power him down by siphoning speed from him the same way we saw during Crisis on Infinite Earths. Remember how Earth-90 Barry Allen, John Wesley's ship, stole Barry's speed for a brief period so that he could destroy the Anti-Monitor's machine? He's like, I gotta take this for a second, kid. You run long enough. You learn a couple new tricks. 
That's also a bit of a hat tip that they're going to be using that flash ability in future episodes too. Like later in the episode on Lee and Yu, Barry's speed force gets all wonky. There's going to be some weird speed force storyline happening later this season. But as Barry and Diggle make it to Lee and Yu, they go to the prison cell where they kept Deathstroke. Nice callback. It was just a really small cell, so they didn't have to build a big set for that. But they reference Ivo's freighter. They reference the Mirakuru. So just because Arrow is over doesn't mean that they're going to stop referencing big locations and big things from the Arrowverse. Remember, the city is right next to a lot of the other cities where the other shows take place, so you'll see Arrow characters showing up on the other TV shows. Number 2 WTF, Cisco leaves the show for a little while in Team Flash. I'll explain what's going on here because the showrunner in real life came out and clarified how this is all going to work. Cisco is back to having no power, so he's just normal Cisco, but because he's just freaking out, he's going to go on this walkabout and catalog all the big changes. He'll come back later this season. He hasn't left the show, effectively. He's just going to be gone for a little while. We also get confirmation on what's going on with Nash Wells. It's his daughter that he's looking for, his own version of Jesse Quick, except his version looks like Allegra. So it's just confirmation about why they've been so weird about Allegra this season. They've been setting it up for the last several episodes. Some of you have even commented on it in my Flash videos like, does he have a daughter that looks like Allegra? Is that why he likes her so much? So this just confirms that. But number one WTF, obviously Iris gets to meet the brand new Mirror Master. Welcome to the TV show. So the post credit scene, Iris is walking by the mirror. She starts to piece things together. Wait a minute, my informant said something about a mirror. So she breaks into McCola Tech in Ava's office. We also find out she's connected to Black Hole because that's how she unlocks the door. Then Ava McCullough winds up yanking her into the mirror dimension through that giant mirror. They haven't completely explained everything about her character, but this is obviously right out of the Flash comics. The Mirror Dimension is just a big thing that they haven't done yet. The new version of Mirror Master is just the next big villain for the next arc, but not the rest of the season. So I think there's going to be one more big villain by the end of the season, but they haven't said who that's going to be yet. I know a lot of you are holding out hope for a version of Red Death on the TV show, so if we get any clues about that in episodes, I'll totally include it in my Easter egg videos. But if you spotted any big Easter eggs that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. And what'll happen is, is I'm allowed to post my non-spoilery Birds of Prey review later tonight, so look out for that. As long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you'll see that video when I post it. Everyone click here for my brand new WandaVision trailer, and click here for my brand new Falcon in Winter Soldier trailer. Thank you so much for watching, everybody stay awesome, I'll see you guys tonight.